Hi guys, welcome to another Rider Alarms help video. In this video, we're just going to quickly go through the massive update that DMSS has just had this morning, which is the 13th of March 2025. Um, and there's quite a few changes where I've had a few phone calls from my customers this morning already, just, just to clarify a couple of bits. But essentially, um, if we go to your DMSS app, uh, now we're making an assumption that you've already downloaded it, you've registered it into your name, so you've got your account. So if you go to me at the bottom right hand corner, for example, that's me and my silly name that's on there. But essentially, you've got that registered and you're logged into your app that's on here. So um, if you haven't registered it, then obviously just go to the app where it says me and then just register and then log in. Um, once you've registered and logged in, if you're the first person to do that on your system, then you will then become the master user for that system. Um, and only you then can add or remove uh, additional users. So first of all, on my main home screen, uh, if we go back to that, I've got a couple of systems on here. So I've got my doorbell, which is... Uh, my Dower VTO doorbell. Um, now that's individually on its own there, mainly because if somebody rings me, then it's it's an own standalone standalone device. Um, if somebody presses the button, then it's going to come up with the green or red um, answer or hang up options. Um, but the biggest question I've had this morning is this massive silly unlock button that they've got on this actual screen. Now, if you press it. Um, it'll ask you if you want to unlock. Now, this has nothing to do with your doors. It's only if you've got that doorbell attached to uh, an electric lock uh, mechanism, which generally most businesses have, but domestic-wise, generally not. Um, it doesn't do anything, even if you press OK. It just has failed to unlock because um, you've got no lock against it, to be fair. Um, so that's that, that big change that we see on there. Um, if we go back uh, to the main screen again, um, below that is my home CCTV system. So this is all the cameras I have. One of the big changes on this one is it used to go from left to right with all your cameras on it and now it goes down. Um, the idea behind that is now you should be able to do everything with one hand essentially rather than having using two. So it shows you my first four cameras, number one being my doorbell and then the other ones being the proper cameras. Um, I've got two more on there which if you press the show more it'll show the, the, the entirety of my system on there. Um, now below that, I've, my business partner has also got um, the same system and he's the master user for that one and he's invited me to have his cameras on my system as well, on my, my, my app as well. Um, obviously he's got a lot more cameras than I do, so if I show, show them all, the other nine, um, it shows you everything that's on there. So there's 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 all them type of cameras that are on there. Um, I can go back up and show less and make it smaller again. Um, same with that one. Uh, but essentially that's what it is. Now I can click in to in individual cameras as normal. Um, now on this view here, you've got a big button like that. Um, that is designed to control a PTZ or a pan, tilt and zoom camera. Um, in on this instance, that's not that type of camera. Um, but just to show you, um, I don't have one because it's quite a big camera. But if I go to uh, my Anthony's uh, system and press this PTZ camera, which he's got on there, and um, takes a couple of seconds to load up, I can then control it uh, from that joy joystick on there. So it's very reactive um, and a big improvement if you've got that type of camera. If you haven't got that type of camera, um, then it's sort of pointless. They should have some method of hiding that because people just go, oh, can I move my camera? And you can't because it's fixed. Um, but if we go back to the main main menu again, <coughs> excuse me, um, the play button at the top, top right corner there just loads up the first four. Um, and then just on the bottom camera there on the right hand side, you've got like a little phone icon. Um, and if I press that, for example, it then rotates the view. So you can, if you've got a, a rectangle phone, then it does the view that way. And then on the phone itself, I could just press back, and it'll take me back to the main view again. Um, or I could just press play, then load up the first four. Um, if I want to see the other ones, I just I can just swipe to the right, and then I'll show me the other cameras that are on my system. Um, and, then, and then I always go back to the home page by pressing the top left hand corner. So that's the, the main lower layout of the home screen that's, that's slightly changed that's on there. Um, there's a few other things that are slightly different as well. So at the bottom, you've got events in the middle. Um, so on the events bit here you've got all which is um, camera and then you've got door so door is obviously that, that will show you a list of calls or missed calls that you've had from the doorbell the camera shows you notifications um, via the camera so if you look from the top there where it says channel 1 and then you've got the big long serial uh, the, the model number and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 it shows you in that way so uh, if I go to the second one down for example just press that for, for argument's sake it will then show up the AI alerts for that particular camera and I could just click on it, press play and it will load up what's caused the alert on that particular camera there. So that's one way of, of sort of viewing it that way. Um, 
so if you if you if like me you have the AI alerts turned on all the time just so I can show customers and things then obviously um, that's that's one way to go um, but I have everything turned on in this menu so this will show me things like tripwires intrusion but it'll also show motion and it'll show other things as well um, if I want to go back to the main screen just press back back again and then it'll go to um, this bit and press back um, one more time Ooh, close the app there and then just press home on there and take me back to the home page now the other thing on this one is the big change that I think is really good is if I press um, let's say another camera for example and then along the bottom of that camera <coughs> below that big stupid joystick um, you've got preview play and events so if you go to events it lists everything down and that's how it used to look essentially before where you've just got your intrusion alerts along the bottom and then you can click onto to each one of them um, and that'll just show you the, the sort of intrusion AI alerts that are on there <coughs> the other option you've got in the middle is the playback so if I click playback for example and this is a bit that I think has improved a lot of people have asked for this in the past uh, but then obviously you've got the day and that shows you uh, the little blue dot shows indicates where there's recordings for everything um, you've then also got the, the little I don't even know what the icon's supposed to be it looks like a torch or some description you can then go all or you can just do regular video um, motion detects, intelligent video, all them sort of things along there um, I always have it clicked to all and then you've got the, the big search bar so you've got the big green bar which means it's recording 24 hours a day and if you can look into the, the, there you can see the blue markers so that's intelligence and stuff but equally along the bottom um, you've got all these tiles along the bottom there and literally it's got the time in the top left hand corner um, how long the, the, the playback's for in the top right hand corner but essentially if you click that um, it, it, it then gives you what's caused that, that particular motion or or something to sort of trigger along that way there so if I go across here uh, to let's say where I normally have quite a few more actual triggers um, if I press that for example you can see the person moving the, on the, along the field at the, in front of the van there um, but you just click along and look at the AI alert so somebody's walked in front of it or something's moved to, to capture the camera's attention um, or if I just want to have a browser, I can just, just go through, just move it across the bar, um, up and down time. But it, what I've seen about this, it looks very responsive, to be fair. Um, all right, I've got good internet with my phone, and I've got good internet at the location where the recorder is. But that's that's loading up, and the way that moves is really quick uh, compared to what it used to be. Um, so that, that's the, the sort of biggest change that I've seen on the playback option on here. Um, or you can just go to events, like you say, the old traditional method, and just see what's being triggered and press it that way. Um, the tiles are a bit bigger. You can sort of see whether there's a person moved in front of that or not. Um, I think this this one here is my wife going to school. Yeah, this is just off on her way to school. Um, but that's that one. So I'll just go back to back to the main menu again. So we're on here. So um, a few other things that have changed. So if you go to me at the bottom right corner, um, obviously back to my silly picture with my name on there. But essentially you've got services um, where you can unbind a device or share devices. So if I click share device, for example, um, I can select which one I want, go to next, and then all you have to do is the email address that the other person has registered their app undo, under, uh, is all you do is you just type an email address into there, uh, press save, and that will then instantly appear within his app, um, like we did this morning with my business partner. Um, you can then select what authorizations they have and everything so shared permissions they you know they've got live view, live view video playback alarm push notification device control so you can just literally i've read it in there untick whatever you don't want them to have um so if you're a business for example you just maybe just want to give them a live view or if you want a live view and push notifications you can just tick them to for example um or we can just go back to um giving them everything which is you know i only share my system with people i trust so um, that's why I have everything ticked. Um, I go back to the main one. So unbind devices. That's essentially if you've shared it with somebody and you want to um, unshare it. That's where you would do that. So that's useful for again for businesses. If you've got lots of people who've got access to the account, you can then cancel them once they've, if they've left or or something like that. Service provider. That would be like if you've got a monitoring solution inside there. Then this is where you control all them details. Um, transfer to a local device. No local devices. That's stuff within your own network. And then you can export devices out to a, a third party elsewhere again. But essentially the bit that you're going to use all the time is that shared device. Um, settings. 
Um, so mine, my, I've got mine in a, a dark view. So this is where you can change stuff like that. So phone location here, default page, whatever you want it to be. So I've got it on the home screen. Appearance, um, where you've got match system settings. So for example, if you've got Google on your phone, um, most people have it set as white, but I prefer it dark because I wear glasses and stuff. Um, so I can have a match system or I can have it light and dark. Um, so if you prefer to have the calendar on your Google, for example, in, with a white background, there, but you prefer to have the DMSS in a dark background, background, that's where you'd select it on there. Or you can just mirror whatever the phone settings are. So if you've got the phone in dark mode, you can just match it from that point of view there. Um, play and sell your network, that's an important one. So um, if, you, if that's turned off, then it'll only load up the, the apps and stuff like that when you're on Wi-Fi. Um, but if you've got like an unlimited data plan, then you can have that turned on. You can view it anywhere without any problems. Uh, hardware decoding, that just helps it. Um, run smoothly when you're watching lots of video footage and stuff like that so you can, I always have that turned on uh, this is an important one so video duration message so your alerts that come through <coughs> um, they generally set out of the box at 10 seconds so those little tiles that you click on to look at the AI alerts and things like that and notifications they're set to 10 seconds so they'll show you a 10 second clip usually within the middle of that 10 second clip it will show you what's appeared and what's caused the trigger um, but some customers prefer to have a longer view so rather than having a a 10 second clip where somebody comes in and then it, it turns off and then they have to go back into the app and to the playback bit and um, you can set that for longer so you can have it for 30 seconds 15 30 a minute two minutes five minutes the one thing to remember when you select these and increase that time frame is obviously that's going to take time to load up into your app into your phone when you're doing it so because it loads up the five minute clip so you may get frustrated if you've got poor internet or uh, at source or if you've got a, a poor wi-fi signal so 10 seconds is usually enough to for you to to look at it and go, yeah, that person should be there or that person shouldn't be there. Um, if that person's there, then it's just as quick now, especially on this update, to go back to playback, go to that tile along the along the bottom of the green bar, and then you can then move it up and down the green bar if you want to. So, but there is there is options there to increase that if you want. Um, you've got notification settings. So obviously this is the bit where you can tailor the notifications. So you can either turn them on or turn them off at the very top there. Uh, periods you can set time frames where I only want notifications after say 10 o'clock at night for example when you're in bed um, and then you've got alarm audio settings now the alarm audio settings is if that will also do an alarm system which you can also add to this app as well so these are general um, uh, modifications to the settings for the alarm system we haven't got an alarm system because there's better ones out there to be fair uh, phone call so this is like a floating bubble so if you're viewing something that something's just happened for example you try to view it and then somebody rings you rather than sort of closing the app and losing his place you can have it as a floating icon so uh, in the real world scenario let's say you've contacted the police because something's happened then you're reviewing the footage just to get a bit more detail and the police call you back for example what you don't want is you you don't want them to close the app down and, and have that conversation so you can leave that on and it gives you a float the dms has to become a floating tile on top of the phone menu um, and then at the very bottom um, you've got to do permissions um, this is takes you straight to the app permissions in the app itself and uh, notifications are allowed so this is an Android phone so notifications are allowed permissions you know camera location microphone nearby devices and stuff like that screen time um, the, the, the one that it says remove permissions if the app is unused <coughs> I always have that turned off mainly because if I don't use the app for such a, for a long period of time it will automatically start turning off all the settings for notifications so um, it's more prevalent in Apple phones to be fair especially uh, after security updates and stuff like that so if you had a security update that you're aware of then always go into here just to double check um, if you've got the setting turned on where it moves and permissions if it happens and used um, depending on the, the phones <coughs> what the phone deems as a time frame for that then obviously you, you don't want them to be turned off you know most people some people want to start using it if they're not interested in looking at the stuff every day <coughs> excuse me i've got a bit of a cough uh, not used not used to looking at stuff every day um, and let's say maybe check it once a month and those permissions may be turned off and you might miss a notification that's, that's critical so always turn that off uh, appear on top uh, changes to system settings so no I don't, don't want to make changes to that um, and then you go back to the main screen clear cache is the stuff that sort of runs along in the background um, so that's a quick overview for now um, any, any questions feel free to contact us thank you